What's up guys? Welcome to G Whiskey. I'm Jeff. Today I've got a list for you guys. We're going to be going over seven really exciting new whiskey releases for fall 2024. Stick around. All right, seven exciting new whiskey releases for fall 2024. Now that's not to say that every whiskey on this list is going to be released in fall 2024, but I said it anyway because, well, clickbait, I guess. But hold on, don't leave. Even if they came out earlier this year, even if they're coming out later this year, the timing actually doesn't matter. What matters is I've got seven fantastic bottles of whiskey that I wanna share with you today. Well, they're probably fantastic. I've tried none of them. Anyway, I put out videos like these every so often. Once I've compiled enough bottles of interest, I'll just do a video on it. And it's just a fun way to keep you guys updated on what's new and exciting, at least for me. Anyway, as I said, these bottles may already be out, they may be upcoming, and sometimes I'll even throw in rumored releases. I'm not above a bit of gossip. Oh my God, guys, can you believe Beyonce has a new whiskey? Anyway, that's the premise, guys. As usual, I do have a mystery pour in my glass today. Now, this is not really related to the list, to the video today. It's not a new release by any means. It's just something I felt like pouring for myself. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of a wild card like that. I do what I want. Your hint for today is that this is a bottle that was recently mentioned in my blind tasting video recently, and it was also in my recent video about shoestring budget whiskeys. It's a classic. So make sure you stick around to the end of the video. I'll share with you what that is. And that's it. Let's not waste any more time. Let's jump into our list. In the meantime, if you'll kindly leave a like down below, that would be greatly appreciated. All right, so we'll kick things off with an honorable mention, and that is this release right here. This is an Ardbeg, and this is something I would be very excited about if it wasn't Ardbeg's only release that I can think of at 40%, and if it wasn't almost 200 US in my market. Certainly some choices were made here. Uh, we're dealing with a brand with a lot of self-confidence, it would appear. Uh, I'd like to try it, but someone would have to buy the bottle and lend it to me, or someone would have to offer me a dram. I'm not going to buy it myself. I think it's too expensive. I don't like the ABV, and I don't like the direction the brand's headed in recently. So, uh, honorable mention, Ardbeg 17. Coming in at number seven, we've got Compass Box Crimson Casks. Now this is a new release. It's the latest addition to the Compass Box core range. It's fully craft and it comes in at 65 pounds in the UK. This is a blended malt. We have stuff like Tinanik, Glen Murray, Ben Rinnis, and some mystery distilleries in here. Uh, this could be really good. The reason it's lower on the list is because it seems like there's a lot of uh, sherry influence, a lot of wine cask influence, and this might end up being a little bit too cask forward for my taste but still definitely open to trying it, excited to try it. I'll grab it when I get the chance. Comes in at number seven, Compass Box Crimson Casks. Coming in at number six, we've got Jura 16 year old Perspective One. Now this one is, I'm not sure if this is a wide release yet. I'm hoping it will be. What's interesting about this stuff is that this is actually a fully craft Jura, which we don't see every day. It's 46.5% ABV, non-chill filtered, natural color. Now, for now at least, what I can find online, the only shop that sells this is a place called La Maison du Whisky in France, uh, and there it's selling for just shy of 80 euros. So a 16-year-old craft Jura. Does this mean that Jura is going to start turning things around and giving us better quality, better presented whiskeys? I don't know. I'm not going to hold my breath. This is definitely a step in the right direction, and I do think, perhaps naively, that someday, somehow, Jura can become a good, quality, well-respected brand. It's not... It's not impossible, so we'll see. In the meantime, curious to try this. Jura 16, the perspective number one at number six. All right, coming in at number five, we've got a bourbon of all things. I've actually been getting a little bit more into bourbon recently, uh, and I'm usually a, a single malt snob, so that is a little bit odd. That said, I guess I'm on brand with my snobbery because the bourbons I like are usually the top shelf bourbons. This appears to be one of them. This caught my eye this week. This one is called Little Book, The Infinite. This is a Jim Beam release, seemingly a premium offshoot of the Booker's line. I've actually got a bottle of regular Booker's on the go and I'm enjoying it. Uh, you guys can let me know down below if you want to see a review of that. But yeah, anyway, this one consists of 20 year old, 14 year old, and also seven and eight year old stock from three different generations of master distillers. Now this one will be a US exclusive and it won't be cheap. This will come in at $199. Probably not anything I'll ever get a chance to try, but I'd like to comes in at number five, Booker's, no, Book, Little Book, The Infinite. My choice for number four is not a single whiskey, but rather a line of whiskeys, and it is the updated Aberfeldy line. 
which has not dropped yet, but it is forthcoming, apparently. Now, I'm told that what they're doing with the Aberfeldy line is kind of similar to what Bacardi did with their sister distillery, Royal Brackla, a couple years back, which is they took something that was typically 40% chill filtered, colored, and they turned it into a craft whiskey, something that was more designed for enthusiasts. And for that, we thank them. Because to be honest, Aberfeldy is never a brand that held much interest for me, and I do think they might actually benefit from some tweaking, especially if it's some tweaking that I would enjoy. I, I like it when they tweak for me. Again, I'm not 100% sure if this is coming out. This is still a rumor, but I think it's likely to happen within the coming year. Uh, if it does, I'll definitely be grabbing a bottle as soon as I come across it. I'm very interested to see what an updated Aberfeldy would look like. Could be amazing. So it comes in at number four, Aberfeldy. All right, so we just talked about a bourbon a moment ago, and now we're gonna move on to an Irish. So we're very international today. Uh, coming in at number three, I've got Redbreast 18. Now, I'm a big fan of the Redbreast line. I think they're fantastic whiskeys. I like the 12 cast strength. I like the 15 year old. Absolutely love the 21 year old. So I have no doubt the 18 is gonna be a banger. In terms of maturation, we have bourbon, Oloroso sherry, cream sherry, and port. Uh, this is the usual 46% ABV. Not a cheap whiskey. This comes in on the UK sites at 185 pounds. Probably won't be getting a bottle myself, but I'd be very curious to try it. So it comes in at number three, Redbreast 18. Next up at number two, we have Ardnaho Infinite Loch. Now this is a follow-up to their inaugural five-year-old release. That is not a whiskey that I've had the chance to review yet. I don't even have a bottle yet. It's ordered. It's coming in soon. Now, you might be thinking, Jeff, the number two whiskey that you're most excited to try on this entire list is from a brand that you've never even tried before. Yeah, that's a fair point, but uh, here's the thing about it. Ardnaho is very hyped, and I'm very suggestible. If there's other cool whiskey reviewers out there drinking this stuff and enjoying this stuff, then I want to as well. Now, for our bottle itself, this is bourbon and Oloroso sherry matured. It comes in at 50% ABV, and apparently the price tag on this will be 55 pounds, which is not cheap for a young whiskey, but still reasonable in today's market. So definitely a bottle I'll be grabbing if I come across it. Comes in at number two, Ardnaho Infinite Lock. All right, coming in at number one, we have Kilhoman Seneg Cast Strength. Now this is a brand new release, 2024. It's not out just yet, but I think it's gonna be coming out pretty soon. It's definitely forthcoming. I don't know how wide a release it's gonna be, and I also don't know how much it's gonna cost. So we are a little bit short on details for this one, but this just being a Seneg at Cast Strength, I know that some of you out there are already frothing at the mouth. Uh, I'm definitely excited for this one. I'm a fan of the Snag, and this one comes in at, what is it, 50, 57.8% ABV. That sounds like fun. So if you're a fan of Kilhoman, if you like your Pete, you like your Sherry, this one is probably going to work for you. Uh, I can't really imagine a scenario where Kilhoman Seneg, which is such a legendary whiskey, comes out of cast strength and people don't get excited and people don't snatch it up as soon as they can. The moment I come across a bottle, I'm grabbing it. That's why it's number one on the list. Kilhoman Seneg, cast strength. All right, that was the list. So that was seven already released or upcoming whiskeys that I'm most excited to try. And of course, I want to put the question off to you guys. So what are some new whiskeys that you really want to get your hands on? Same rules apply. Maybe they're already out. Maybe they're upcoming. Maybe they're just rumors. Maybe you're excited to try the new Beyonce release. Maybe what's got you excited isn't necessarily a new release, but just the latest in a series. So for example, I'm also really excited about Kilhoman's latest 100% Isla release. I think it's batch 14. That's one that I really want to try this year. So yeah, no real rules apply, just what do you want? And finally, if you stuck around for the mystery pour, what I've got in the glass here is actually a whiskey that has been officially discontinued and it's slowly getting phased out for a newer, older expression. This one is Glenmorangie 10 year old. Now, if you watch the recent series I did on Glenmorangie, you know that the 10 year old is being phased out for a 12 year old. I haven't tried it yet. I will be picking it up when I come across it. And you can definitely expect a side by side with this one, which should be interesting. As for the 10 year old itself, I'm a fan. Uh, sure, it's not a craft whiskey. It's 40% colored, chill filtered, but it's also unpretentious, cheap. It's widely available. It's not a whiskey that will impress, but it is a whiskey that'll satisfy. I think it's a classic. And that brings us to the end of today's video. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Now, if you want to help out with the channel, I do have both Patreon and PayPal linked down below. Anything and everything helps. 
Also, if you have suggestions, if there's something you want to see reviewed, you can put that down below as well. And I guess that's it for today. We'll catch you with the next one. Bye, guys.